Welcome to our second video of Chapter 4, which is Section 2, Apply Congruence and Triangles. So we have three objectives for today. We are going to write a congruency statement. We are going to identify corresponding parts. And we are going to use properties of congruent figures to calculate missing side and angle measures. So you've learned congruent before. Congruent means an equal measure. So if angles are congruent, they have the same measure. If segments are congruent, they have the same length. So what does it mean for figures to be congruent? Well, if figures are congruent, that means that all sides and angles are congruent. between the two figures. So if figure A is congruent to figure B, that means all the angles of figure A are the same as the angles of figure B, and all the sides. Now all those sides and angles that are congruent, those are called the corresponding parts. So corresponding parts are the congruent sides or angles of two congruent figures. So to explain that more, let's just jump into example number one. It says write a congruency statement, identify all pairs of corresponding parts. Okay, so a congruency statement is going to look like triangle blah 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 is congruent to triangle blah blah blah. So in this case I have triangle ABC I'm going to call it, and that's congruent too. Now, the first triangle doesn't matter the order that you put the sides in. Second triangle, the order is very important. Okay, so my triangle, ABC, angle A matches up with angle D, so that has to come first. Now, angle B matches up with E, so E comes second. And then lastly, C matches up with F, so F comes last. And I know that they match up based on the tick marks. So A has three tick marks, D has three tick marks, so they are congruent. Um, I know that these figures are congruent because all of the sides and angles are marked congruent. So that's why I'm able to write this, this congruency statement. Next, we are asked for the corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are the angles that are congruent. So I already pointed out that angle A is congruent to angle D. We pointed out that angle B is congruent to angle E. And we pointed out that angle C is congruent to angle F. Now, there are three pla two places that you could find out this information. One is you could look at the figure. I know that angle A has three tick marks, angle D has three tick marks, so they're going to be congruent. You also should be able to tell this information from your congruency statement. So, angle A, my first angle, is congruent to D, my first angle. B, the second angle, is congruent to E, the second angle. So that's how to find the corresponding angles. Sides is the same way. I could look at my figure. So from the figure, I know that AB, which has two tick marks, is congruent to DE, which has two tick marks. I know that BC, which has one tick mark, is congruent to EF, which has one tick mark. And then lastly, I know that AC is congruent to DF with three tick marks. But again, I could also tell that looking at my congruency statement. AB, the first two, is congruent to DE, the first two, etc. So in this case, we have three pairs of corresponding sides, three pairs of corresponding angles, and we wrote our congruency statement. So here is one for you to try. Right now, pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. For our congruency statement, I'm going to say triangle JKL is congruent to. Now for JKL, I want one tick mark, two tick marks, three. So I have to do the same thing. One, two, three. So TSR. This is just one possible congruency statement. Your congruency statement is based off of how you wrote the first triangle. So if you didn't write triangle JKL, you're going to have a different statement than I do. If you wrote, let's say, KLJ, you would have gotten SRT. 
So if your congruency statement doesn't match up with mine, that's okay, or if it doesn't look exactly the same. For corresponding angles, I know that angle J is congruent to angle T. I know that angle K is congruent to angle S. And I know that angle L is congruent to angle R. You should have been able to tell this from both your figure and your congruency statement. Last one, corresponding sides. I know that JK is going to correspond to TS. I know that KL will correspond to SR. And I know that JL is going to correspond to TR. So hopefully you got that one right. If not, hopefully you see what mistake you made. We will have more time to practice this in class tomorrow. This point, I want you to flip the page, please. Okay, example number three is the continuation of what we did on the first side. It says write a congruency statement for each of the following. So doing the first one with you, I have triangle. I'm going to call the first triangle D E G. So that's the one on the top. Okay, so D was my right angle. That's going to be congruent to F, my right angle in the bottom triangle. Then I went to E, which has one tick mark. That's going to be congruent to G, which has one tick mark. Lastly, I went D, E, G. So in my bottom triangle, I'm going to go F, G, and I'm left with angle E. Now, you try the next two problems. Good luck. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to try these next two. Now, for the second one, or the example in the middle, you should have run into a little bit of difficulty. I noticed that all my angles of the first triangle are congruent to all of them in the second triangle. So I have three congruent angles, they're congruent to these three. The issue comes in in that I don't have any congruent sides. I have one congruent side here, one here, one here. But those sides are not congruent to any of the sides in the second triangle. So, these triangles should have been not congruent. Okay, for the next one. I'm about to write some stuff down. If you are listening to this video with sound, I do not want you to write down my answer to this last example. I would like you to leave this last example blank. So again, if you are listening to this video with sound, do not leave an answer to this third example. I'm about to write down my answer. I want you to leave it blank. We are going to discuss this in class tomorrow. You should come in with no, nothing written down for this example. Do not tell anyone else that I had you do this. Okay, example number four. So now that we've identified congruent figures and we've written congruency statements and corresponding parts, we're going to use these congruent figures. So here's what we're told. In the diagram, DEFG is congruent to SPQR. You're going to have to find the value of X and find the value of Y. Okay, so first thing, I know that DE is congruent to SP, so I'm going to mark that. DE is congruent to SP. I know that EF, second and third, is congruent to PQ, second and third. I know that FG is going to be congruent to QR. So then that leaves us with DG is congruent to RS. Okay, so that should help us find Y. So I see that Y is this side, 2Y minus 3. It has three tick marks. So it's going to be congruent to this side of 14, which also has three tick marks. So I have 2y minus 3 equals 14. Adding 3, I get 2y equals 17, and y equals 17 over 2, which is also 8.5. Okay, now to find x, I need to find the angle that is congruent to angle E. So I have angle E is 1 half x plus 4. Using my congruency statement, angle E is the second angle. That's going to be congruent to angle P. Angle P is 62. 
So to solve this, I'm going to subtract 4. I get 1 half x equals 58. To get rid of that 1 half, I multiply both sides by 2. So I get x is 116. Okay, so this problem looks overwhelming at first, but it's really important that you identify all of those congruent parts. So mark your congruent sides, mark your congruent angles. Let's move and look at the next two examples. I'm going to do example 5 with you also. You're going to do example 6. So in example 5, you are given that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. We need to find the values of x and y. Let's start with x. I have 5x plus 2. That needs to be equal to something. So that's angle D. Looking at my congruency statement, angle D should be congruent to angle A. Angle A is 87. So I get 5x plus 2 equals 87. Subtracting 2, I have 5x equals 85. Dividing by 5, I get x equals 17. Now for y, I have 3y equals. Now y is angle C, my third angle which is congruent to angle F, which is the third angle in the second part of the congruency statement. Now, angle F I don't have, so I'm going to need to somehow find that. Well, I know that angle D is 87, since it's congruent to angle A, and I know that every triangle equals 180. So I'm going to have 42 add 87 add angle F equals 180. Now, 42 and 87 is going to give me 129. So I get 129 add angle F is 180. If I subtract 129, I get angle F equals 51 degrees. So now I can set my 3y equal to 51. When I divide by 3, I get y equals 17. Okay, example six is for you to do on your own. Right now, pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. You should have known that H was congruent to T based on the congruency statement. That gives you 51 equals 6A minus 3. So I get 54 equals 6A. So A equals 9. Then you should have found out that K is congruent to S. So I have 7B minus 10 equals. You should have had to find angle S. Using the same idea as before with example 5 with the angle summing to 180, you should have found angle S to be 46 degrees. Solving, you get B equals 8. If you did not get that, you made a mistake, and please make sure you go back and fix that mistake. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be checking to see that you have all of the work for this problem. Moving on to the next page, we have the third angles theorem. The third angles theorem tells us if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are also congruent. So two angles in my first triangle are congruent to two in my second. The third pair of angles also has to be congruent. So we're going to use that idea in example number seven. In example number seven, you are asked to find the measure of angle BDC. So BDC is this angle right here. Now I'm going to notice I have a whole bunch of triangles here, but two big overarching triangles. So I have this triangle right here, which is ACD. And then I have this triangle right here, which is B, D, C. Now I see that A and B are marked congruent. A is marked 45 degrees, so B is also 45 degrees. I will notice that this little angle is congruent to this little angle. This one is 30, so this one is also 30. And now we are asked to find B, D, C, this angle right here. If I take 180 and I subtract 45 and I subtract 30, I get angle BDC to be 105 degrees. Remember that all the angles are going to sum to 180, so all I did was take 180 and subtract two of the angles to get the third angle. Okay, we got a few more, so stick with me. 
In terms of properties, there's properties that we've seen before. A reflexive property tells us that triangle ABC is congruent to itself. Any triangle is congruent to itself. Symmetric property tells us that if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, then I can write that, write that congruency in the reverse order. So I can write that DEF is congruent to ABC. Lastly, transitive property. Transitive property tells me if I have triangle ABC that's congruent to triangle DEF. But that triangle DEF, it's also congruent to GHI. Then ABC is congruent to GHI. So DEF act as the, acted as the bridge. I know you guys have heard these before. They still hold true with congruent triangles. So we are going to use them in a proof. Proof is mostly filled out for us. We just have to add a few other things in. Okay, so what you need to know is what's true is the stuff that's marked in the diagram. Everything that's marked in the diagram we said in statement one, which was given. We are trying to prove that the triangles are congruent. Triangles are congruent when all sides are congruent and all angles are congruent. Right now, I have two pairs of sides and I have two pairs of angles. So I have one more pair of sides and I have one more pair of angles that I need to prove true. Need to prove congruent, that is. Okay, so I will notice in statement two, BD is congruent to BD. Well, that's the reflexive property. Remember, any item is congruent to itself. Okay, so right now I have one, two, three pairs of sides. I need one more pair of angles, and then my triangles are congruent. In the figure, I need triangle A is congruent to angle C. Those are the only ones that are not marked. So angle A is congruent to angle C. That's the third angles theorem. So I already have two pairs congruent, so the third pair has to be congruent. Now I have three pairs of angles congruent, three pairs of sides are congruent, so my triangles are congruent. The reason that we're going to write is all corresponding parts are congruent. Okay, we're going to do a whole lot more proofs this chapter, but this was just a little bit of a reminder of how proofs work. So flip to the next page, please. Okay, we finally reached the end of the video. You have one last problem to do on your own. So, so far we talked about congruency statements, corresponding parts, and finding missing measures. This is your entrance problem to come to class tomorrow. Please have this problem filled out when you come to class. Good luck.